simple quadratic formula by completing the square. So we have to uh, make sure that one side is equal to zero. Always we're going to use it in the form ax squared plus bx plus c because the quadratic formula uses the values a, b, and c. You can use whatever letters you want there, but that's where, what you'll see in our formula sheet, on the ID data booklet, in textbooks, and all that kind of thing. So, uh, let's complete the square. I'm just going to something like that. So, think about what we were doing yesterday. With the constant term, we brought it to the right. So, when we do that, we're going to get ax squared plus bx equals negative c. Okay? Then, we divided by the coefficient of x squared. So both sides. Now you could divide by a both sides to start. Really doesn't matter. So when you do that, what happens? You end up getting x squared, because a divided by a is 1, and then plus b over a x equals negative c over a. So now we have 1x squared, which is what we want. Then, to get that constant term that we're adding to both sides, we have to take half of the coefficient of x, which is b over a, and then square it. Okay, well what is that? Half of b over a is b over 2a. Squaring that is going to be b squared over 4a squared. We do it there, we have to do it here. So we took half of the coefficient of x and squared it, added it to both sides of the equal sign. Then we have to factor the left side. So when we factor it, remember, it's going to be x plus, if that's a plus, and then half of this coefficient or the square root of this. It's going to be the same. So really, that value is this here before you square. So that's going to be plus b over 2a, bracket squared. And then we would always collect like terms. Well, here there's no x's, so these are like terms, these are all numbers, but we need a common denominator. So common denominator is 4a squared. So really here we're multiplying this, we got to multiply by 4a, top and bottom. So that's going to be negative 4ac plus b squared over 4a squared. Then, to get x by itself, we it's inside the bracket there, so we want to take the square root of both sides, where we have plus or minus in front. Okay, so that's going to be x plus b over 2a, plus or minus. Now, we like to show a positive term first rather than the negative. So I'm going to show this as um, b squared minus 4ac over 4a squared. And then simplify it. So we can't take the root of the numerator here, but the square root of 4a squared, that is a perfect square. And this radical sign is on the whole fraction, right? So it's the whole thing. Don't be lazy uh, when you have square root of a, a fraction. It's the whole thing. So when I bring my constant term goes to the right, then I can show this with a denominator of 2a. 
Now my radical is just in the numerator. Okay, and you'll notice that you have a com common denominator between these two terms. So we're going to show it as one fraction. And that, ta da, is the quadratic formula. So I highly recommend that you memorize it. Certainly by the end of the course you should have it. If you're going into 30-1, it will be expected that you have it memorized. Uh, so you want to start now. Okay. And so when you're doing these questions, maybe to start, you write out the formula before any substitution each time, and that helps you remember it. You go on YouTube. There's some little uh, songs and rhymes that you can use to remember it as well. Okay? But you need to have that in mind. So notice all the letters in there are A, B, and C. Those come from the coefficients of x squared, x, and the constant. Okay? So now we're going to use it. Uh, just give me a sec to find the question I want to do. So, as I said, to start, you might want to write out the quadratic formula. It's always either x equals, if x's are the variable that's used, if there's m's in here or y's or whatever variable, make sure you use it. It doesn't just convert to x, right? So, uh, in this case, it's x's. So, um, I'm just going to write out the quadratic formula here. You want to write on the side what your a, b's, and c's are. Your a is the coefficient of x squared, and it's, if there's nothing there, it's a 1. Coefficient of x is negative 4, and the constant term is negative 7. Keeping the sign in front is super important. Okay, It will change your answer if you forget that it's negative 4, or forget that it's negative 7. Okay, so really important copy those down correctly. Okay, then we're going to substitute. So I'm going to put brackets what, around the values that I have to substitute. Again, with negatives, if you don't put brackets, it might look like a subtraction, or you might forget to put the negative, that kind of thing. So my b is negative 4. So negative b if you know that that's positive right to start, you can, but I'm just showing everything by substitution. So negative 4 squared minus 4 times a times c over 2a. So, opposite of a negative is a positive. This if you want to do that all in one step, you can, all right? Or you can take two steps, do that, 
So that's going to be what? Uh, 34, 44. Okay, what's important to note here, especially if you have messy writing, is that you have to be careful that that fraction sign, that dividing, goes under everything. Okay, it starts to the left of the B. So sometimes students will go like this. Okay, because they're lazy. And that to me really says 4 plus or minus the root of 44 over 2. Okay, it's 4 plus or minus the root of 44 all over 2. Not quite done here because you always have to express in simplest form. So even if we don't prompt you for it and remind you, you've got to know. Root of 44, you can simplify. So that's going to be 2 root 11. And then check and see if you can divide anything out. In order to divide out, it has to be a factor of the denominator and it has to go into everything in the numerator. So the constant term and the coefficient of the, the root. If there is no coefficient of the root, remember it means it's a one, so you can't divide everything out. You could split it into two separate fractions, but we rarely do. So in this case, uh, the proper way of showing this, which you don't have to show all of that, that's really factoring out a two and then dividing those twos. Okay, so this ends up being two plus or minus root 11. This is what I sometimes see from students. Okay. Which, uh, in a way, that's okay if you leave it like that. So that's actually still correct. Not simplified, but still correct. Because you've taken the first term and the second term. This is what I sometimes see from students as well. Okay. They kind of divide out the two, but then they leave this whole thing. So that definitely is not correct. Okay. What other common mistakes? Um, or they might go, they might kind of forget about this and might go two plus or minus root of 44. Right? So that's not correct either because you haven't divided this term by t. Right? Okay. There's the next one. So you want to expand everything out and get zero on one side.
we're going to be doing this. Keep the x equals all the way down, or I should, as long as you put it back in, I should have put it back in here at the end, because that's your solution, right? Just to confirm uh, what the variable is. In this case here, check the 76, make sure that, um, see if you can reduce it. So 76 is what? 4 times... Uh, 19, All right, so that's going to be negative 6 plus or minus 2 root 19 all over 4. In this case, what's common here is 2, and that does divide out, okay? So you can factor it out. Often what I end up doing, just be careful that you do it into every term, is 2 goes into this twice goes into this negative three times, so I leave the negative there, and it goes into that once. It has to be divided out three different places, once in the numerator, the denominator, and twice, both places in the numerator. Okay. So then, we write that, that's going to be negative three plus or minus root 19 all over two. Get out your calculator and let's graph to check. Um, so in this second one, our original question was that. All right. So um, could be that you might expand incorrectly, get it on the wrong side. Probably best to do the original, even though it's not my favorite way of graphing. I like to get everything on one side, but the numbers are pretty small, so let's try it out. Just use a standard screen, see what happens. So there's the left side, and the right side is constant. So it's really easy to see where they intersect. So if I go second, trace, intersect, I'm going to go enter, enter, enter. That's the right hand for the largest x-intercept, okay? Is that going to be the one where we're adding or subtracting the radical? Adding, right? Because we've got to go bigger. If we're subtracting, it would go the other way. So what you can do to check is quit out of this, type in your x variable, enter on it, and it's copied out the x value of that point of intersection with the decimal places. Now, let me check to see um, if it's the same as my, my one where I'm adding. If you have the fraction capability, you can go alpha y equals fraction, then you're not going to make a mistake with the bracket. <coughs> Sorry. 
So here, negative 3, I'm going to add root of 19, then cursor down 2. Enter on that, and I get the same decimal values. I know I did it right. The only thing that that won't tell you in this method is whether you completely simplified it. Because if I put in the one version up here with the plus, I would have been correct as well. So it gets you the right answer, just depends, you have to know how to simplify. Okay, now if you um, don't have that capability, then you use brackets. Let's put brackets around that. So I would go uh, bracket negative 3 plus root of 19. Cursor out of that, close the brackets, divide by 2, and we get that. Okay, so it depends on the version of your calculator. Okay, and one more before we look at the discriminants. See if you remember this from semester one. Solving the irrational equation. So you want to remember to multiply through by your lowest common denominator, which in this case is x times x plus 2. These denominators are different, so you need one factor of each. So multiply the left side by the lowest common denominator and the right side by the lowest common denominator. Okay, so distribute that. The x plus 2s divide out, so we get 3x squared minus the x to, x's divide out, so we get 1 times x plus 2, keeping that in brackets, or changing the sign if you don't. And this is 5x times x plus 2. Okay, now it's a quadratic. So expand to get rid of the brackets. And get everything on one side. Now, I like to get uh, the x squared term be positive, but let's say you brought everything to the left side. So you'd have negative 2x squared uh, minus 11x minus 2 equals 0. Okay? You can use the quadratic formula right now. A would be negative, B would be negative, C would be negative as well. Okay? I recommend that now divide out or multiply out both sides by a negative 1. Reason B, if, if A is negative, then your denominator is negative, and oftentimes you forget that we don't want a negative in the denominator, and so you lose a half a mark for not simplifying. So what I would do here is multiply or divide both sides by negative 1. And then you can use your quadratic formula. So your A is 2, B is 11, C is 2. So you can do this all at once. So 122 minus 8 times 2 is 16. So 
one of six. No, what did I do? Oh, that's 16. Yep, yep, yep. 121, right? Minus 16. I don't know what I said. Uh, 95? No? 105. 105. Thank you. Sorry, sorry. 121 minus 60. Oh, yeah, 105. What am I doing? Okay, so 5 goes into that. 21 times, so there's nothing that you can do to simplify that, okay? Technically, for a rational equation, you do want to look for your restrictions, so x can't be uh, 0 or, that was negative 2, right? Well, x will be, yeah. And so, it doesn't uh, come into play here, so we don't have to eliminate anything from our solution set. Right, so this really comes from back up at the top there. Okay, nothing you can do. Oh. I didn't start anyone. Else. 